Hi, I'm Jenna, and this is episode 70. Whew, what a week. Super, super busy here. Um, it's really hot today. The humidity is just killing me, but the sun is shining, and unfortunately it doesn't sound like it's going to last for long because we're supposed to get really bad storms tonight. So, I guess we'll just get on with it. Um, Knit-alongs. The only knit-along we have going on right now is our felt-along. So you can crochet it or knit it. It just has to be felted when you're done. And uh, prizes for that. Uh, the knit-along goes through the end of July. So July 31st. I think July has 31 days. I hope my camera isn't crooked. It looks like it might be sitting. It's such a pain to get it level. So if I'm a little crooked today, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, lots of awesome, awesome uh, entries. I hope to get at least one more felted item done. Uh, the prizes for the felt along is a wonderful Knitting's My Bag bag. Donated by moi. Maybe yellow. Love this bag. Love the fabric. And... Also, a skein of Sock Bunny Studios Sugar DK and the California Flamingos, which it is so soft. And this was generously donated by Kimberly, who is Sock Bunny of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit Podcast and Sock Bunny Studios. So, go check her out. Her stuff is so beautiful, and it's even more beautiful in person. Like, you get it, and you're like, whoa. Oh, okay. I have not got much done this week. It's so crazy. I've been trying to get packed for my trip and get everything gathered up and decide what I'm knitting on vacation. I'm like, I've never had that concern before. <laughs> so I, I'll show you what I'm thinking about here. I don't usually talk about upcoming things that I might be knitting, but I'm not sure that I will record next week. So far, I'm planning on it, but I'm not 100% sure. It depends on how busy I am and how much I get done if I have anything to show you guys. Because I'm trying to, like, my house looks like a tornado th went through it. It's so messy because everything here has just been so chaotic. Especially with the kids now out of school, and I feel like I have time to do nothing. So, the plan is that I will, but if I don't, I apologize ahead of time. It just means things got way too crazy because I have to leave the next day. I leave next Thursday. So my I have an FO this week, my only FO, and I finished my rainbow socks. And mine match, they match up perfectly because I have to have matchy matchy socks. I don't know why. It bugs me if the stripes are off. So it is Knit Picks Felici in the rainbow colorway and I love the fleecy. Someone was asking me um, how I liked it and I'm like you know I'd have to say it's probably one of my favorite all time favorite sock yarns because it washes so nice. I think it wears great and it's super soft like ridiculously soft and I've bought in sock yarn that's like three times as much that isn't half as nice like seriously love this, love this yarn so that's it. I wanted to get these done for my trip because I figure, well, with rainbow socks, it doesn't matter what I wear them with because they'll match anything. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Um, I don't have any current works in progress that I've been knitting on this week. But I'm hoping within the next week to get my Spring Awakening shawl done. So I showed this a couple weeks ago and I was working on it and I'm almost out of yarn. I have this tiny little wee bit left, just a few grams. So it is Spring Awakening by Paula P. Or Paulina. Paulina P. Um, so it's bottom up and it has this beautiful lace detail that it's kind of hard to see. It'll be more noticeable when it's blocked. But it kind of looks like little bunches of flowers. So Hence, I guess, the spring awakening, because it's supposed to look like flowers coming up. And I'm knitting it out of Cascade Heritage in butter and gray. So, 
so oh, my needle's poking through. So I'm almost out of yarn and I ordered more. So I really hope, I really want this off the needles. It's been on the needles for over a year. And I just, I kind of just lost steam with it. I got through the edging part with all the design. And once I got to like the stockinette part, I was just like done with it. And it's a great pattern. It's well written. It's big. It's massively huge. And I did make the biggest size. And I just, I think, I just got bored with the stockinette. And I think I got bored with the gray. I like color. And the fact that I picked so much gray for a project is not something I would normally do. But I love gray and yellow together. So... I'm trying not to start anything new and work on it until my trip because I want to have, I don't want to like get something half done and finish it while I'm gone and then not have enough things to work on. And that's the problem I'm running into is I want to, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be gone four days, technically a little less than four days, but from the time I leave the house to the time I get home, it'll be more than three and a half. So, I need something to knit while waiting to get on the plane. While on the plane. While on the shuttle from the airport to the hotel. You know, and back. And then also something to knit on for the three full days that I will be at the hotel. So, I mean, it is a knitting retreat and I plan on knitting. I mean, I'm going to go and I talk, but I talk and knit just fine. I don't... I'm not going to take anything that should need that much concentration that I don't, you know, I can't focus and talk at the same time. So what I'm thinking about taking is I'm going to take vanilla socks. I mean, a long trip. you got to take vanilla socks, right? My dilemma is I don't know what, I can't, I have so much sock yarn. I have way too much sock yarn. And I can't decide um, which one to pick. I'm like, do I want? self-striping, do I want variegated, I haven't made variegated socks in a long time, I'm, I'm just kind of stumped, like I just don't know what I want, so I mean I have time, I have a week, everything has to be packed up and ready by the night before, because I have to get up at an ungodly hour to catch my plane, at least for me, I'm not a morning person at all, whatsoever, <laughs> So, um, the first thing I'm going to take was a gifted pattern from a birthday from the wonderful Steve of Dramatic Knits. I just love his face. And I was calling this the wrong thing last week. I'm like, usually if I call something the wrong thing, someone will call me out about it in that episode's thread. And nobody did. Anyways, it's the TGV, which is high speed knitting and... This doesn't give any information away. But it's this pattern. And it's by um, Susan Ashcroft. So I'm going to be knitting that. And I am going to use the um, Sock Bunny Studios in the Fruit Smoothies colorway that I got for my birthday. Now, I ran into a problem. So I'm reading the pattern. I really hope. I mean, it's this is very common with shawls. Is you knit to the halfway point and then the pattern changes you move into a different section well my problem is is I'm like I'm not taking my scale with me I'm like I don't want any questions on why I'm carrying a scale even though it says nitpicks on it and you know anything I know in Ohio you get pulled over with a scale and it can be considered paraphernalia and all this crazy stuff so what I did is I wound it up out of the hank and I put it on my scale and I pulled out the middle in big chunks <laughs> until I got half to half the ball then I went and I just made like a little slip knot like you just pull it up knot it so you can just pull it right out I mean I didn't do it tight it's just a small little thing what I did to keep it from slipping out is I took a locking stitch marker and put it through the loop so it can't come out you can't pull that knot out because the stitch marker will stop it so it's halfway then I went started from the beginning and I rewound the skein. This stitch marker is actually 
in the middle of the ball. Like, halfway. So I figure that way when I'm knitting, I knit, 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 when this stitch marker pops out, I know I'm halfway. That's the theory. I've never done this before, <laughs> but I'm thinking, shoot, I really have to think of a way to find the halfway mark without being able to weigh it. Because I don't know if anyone's going to have a scale there. And My luck, you know, I'll decide to work on this on the plane and... You know, I don't want to have to rip back, and I want it to be as big as it can be also, because I, for me, the bigger the shawl, the better. So, that's my first, second project. So, plain socks, the TGV, and then I got this, like, wise idea. I want to take a sweater to knit it on, right? You know, variety, socks, shawl, sweater, the three S's. Basic. So, um, I was kind of torn between two sweaters, and the first one that I was really thinking I wanted to take, because I want buttons from it, we're going to a buttons shop in Rochester, called Ginny's, and so I really wanted to get the buttons to go with my Belfast hoodie. The only problem is, it's a huge sweater, like, it's a long sweater with a hood, and it's long sleeves, and it's... It's a worsted weight yarn, and it's just, it's a big sweater. And it's 14 skeins of Quince & Company Lark. Now, the skeins are just, what, 50 gram? Yeah, they're 50 gram skeins. So that's why there's so many. That's why there's 14. Um, but I'm like, I do not want to have to go and wind all those little balls of yarn and have to lug them with me. So I decided to go with... Um, a pattern by Alana Dacos from the Botanical Knits book, and I am going to start the Entangled Vine card again because I also um, am going to need buttons for this because you need six buttons. So it has the beautiful Entangled Vines pattern on the sleeve that you can kind of see here, and then that's the full sweater. So I thought, okay, it's like three quarters lengths. You know, it hits, it looks like, at about the hip. There's no hood. Um, it is a cardigan, so that should be easy enough. And I am using um, Barocco Vintage. Now, on Jimmy Bean's Wool, they called it chocolate. I know not all places use the name, but it is a beautiful yarn. It's kind of, it has a lot of depth to it. It's not a flat brown. It's like light brown and kind of a coppery brown all in one. And it just looks like there's a lot of dimension in the color. And I think especially since it is like a the deep like espresso brown and the copper brown mixed together, it'll work really well with my hair because my hair is quite coppery. So um, I'm excited about that. And it's, you know, the I've never used, I own a ton of Broco Vintage, and I've never used it. I think I buy it because it's affordable and I've heard great things about it. So I'm, it's really soft. It is a wool acrylic blend, and I'm really excited to knit with it. It feels like it's going to make a really nice light sweater, because I kind of want this for fall. I'm kind of torn between sizes, because it's like, do I pick the size that will fit now and into the fall? Or do I go down a size and it not fit? And it might fit by fall and it might not fit till next year. So I'm probably just going to go with the size that will fit me now. I hope I bought enough yarn for that size. I don't remember which size I bought. And I got on Jimmy Bean's wool because I was looking for something else. And I forgot it in the other room. I might have to stop and go get it here in a few minutes, but I'll keep going. Um, so that's what I'm using. This. Love it. I think it's going to be so pretty. Because I really like the brown that the girl was in, in the sweater. And that's one of the things I worry about is because I'm afraid of getting bored with the color. See, it, the color of that yarn really reminds me a lot of the color of the sweater in the actual book. Even though it's not. I don't know if it says what the... Oh, they used Malabrigo Merino Worst for that. 
the sweater the model's in. So, so those are the three things I think I'm going to take with me. So if I do record next week, as planned, um, I will at least have all those started. I probably won't have much to show, that's the thing. So, um, if I do have knitting time after, I'm going to swatch for the sweater and I start the socks in the shawl to have them ready to go. Uh, there, um, someone's taking up a collection of preemie caps for the Mayo Clinic, I believe it is, right there in Rochester, because the hotel I'm staying at is like right across the street from the Mayo Clinic. So I'm like, okay, I have more than enough sock yarn to whip up some cute little preemie hats and, um, you know, be more than happy to do that. So I do have some yarny goodness this week. Like I said, I um, placed a Jimmy Bean tool order because I did have some bean bucks that I had to use. Because it is June, so if you have bean bucks at Jimmy Bean tool, you got to use them before the end of the month, plus your free shipping coupon, or you lose them. So, um, this is the Cascade Heritage in the, it says just gray on the website, but it, the color is 5660. So, just a real pretty silvery gray. Simple. I love the Cascade Heritage yarn. It is so soft. It is just, oh, I love it. It's probably one of my favorites. And then, oh, spoiler alert. I hope you didn't see that if you didn't want to. Um, I got my Dancing Dog Dye Works um, Monster Mania Club. So, we got, um, how many yards? 200 yards? 218 yards on the front, not the back. Um, of a variegated and 50 yards of a semi-solid and it is called Gummy Brights and Orange Mini. So it is bright. It is super awesome bright. It is so very summer. So I just love it. I'm so excited because Michelle Dancing Dog Dye Works will be at the retreat with me. We'll probably be attached to each other's hips. I'm so excited about that. And then it's not quite yarny goodness, but um, I placed an order to uh, Fusion Beads because I had gotten an email and it was like 20% off all their seed beads and I'm like, hey, I kind of need some of those because I had ordered a ton of the Crystal Clear AB beads, which I guess the AB stands for Aurora Borealis. So they are size 8 and I going. I ordered a bunch of these for my Even Star. Well, my Even Star has not been touched in a long time. When I get back from the trip, that is one of my goals, is to work on that and have it done by the end of the year. So, um, when I knit my Advent Calendar scarf last December, last year, I used some of these beads from my Even Star. So I had to replace them. And then I'm like, well... If I make another one this year, I'm going to want to use the same beads because they're crystal clear. So there's no color to them. They're not silver lined. And they have the, like, rainbowy sheen on them. So when the light hits them, it just gives a little sparkle. Like, I didn't want, like, in-your-face glitzy beads. I just wanted something that just when the light hit it right, it kind of shimmered. So I ordered seven packs because I'm thinking, okay, the scarf took two or three. I can't remember. And then I want to make another scarf this year, so I'd need two or three. And then I added one more in just for good measure. And then they sent me a sample of four um, Czech crystal becone beads. I don't know. I've never... They look like little Swarovski crystal beads. I've never heard such a thing. They sent me four free ones. I was kind of hoping they'd send me a tape measure again because I use my tape measure all the time that they send me. Sent me last time, but that's cool too. So, fusionbeads.com. Love them. Super, super fast service. Great selection. Their website is so easy to use. Um, I'm going to go and grab... Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, I'll be right back. So when I was placing my Jimmy Beans wool order, I had just happened to be on Ravelry. I don't remember how I came across it. But there was a, a pattern out of this magazine 
knit scene, knit scene, what is it, spring? Yeah, spring uh, 2013. Now, I don't know how I missed this issue. For some reason, I don't want to say it's necessarily knit scene is hard to find around here. It just, I don't, it, it must come and go quick or something, or I just don't pay attention to it. I won't say it's one of my favorite magazines, but when I saw, I gotta show you this first, because I couldn't find my little sticky tabs, apologies, but when I saw this one sweater, I was like, OMG, I have to make this, like I want to make this so bad. Look at that. I am so in love with this sweater. And I'm normally not a pullover kind of girl, but I love, I love Noro. And I just, I love that the stripes, it's knit on the bias, and they just, I love it. Now, I don't know what's up with this girl's makeup. Now, I know knit scene sometimes has questionable styling with their models. But can you see the blue weird lines above her eyes? I'm like, what the heck? Now, the thing that really throws me off about this picture is that the girl on the cover is wearing the same sweater. And look at her. She's looking fresh-faced and beautiful. Very girl next door. Beautiful picture. I agree. Beautiful for the cover. Why would you do that to, to the other girl? I, I don't know. So, I pretty much bought the magazine for the one pattern. Um... I don't know. There's not a whole lot that I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to knit all this too. Let's see. There was, oh, I thought this was kind of cute. What was that sweater's name? The Arkansas Pullover. This one's called Lost uh, Garden Tea, and I thought this was kind of cute. And that's the thing I love about Jimmy Bean's Wool, too, is they have so many, like, old issues of magazines. So if you missed one or you see something on Ravelry and you're like, oh, my goodness, I think I must knit that. I usually have pretty good luck of, you know, finding, you know, as long as it's not too old. A couple years, maybe. And there was a hat, I think. Is it a hat in this one? Yeah, I really thought this little cloche was really cute. I don't know that I would make it because I wouldn't necessarily wear it, but I thought it was cute. They have like a whole section of very 20s inspired um, outfits. But there's just some stuff that, like this, it's like a sweater dress, but it's ribbed at the bottom so it pulls in funny and it kind of makes you look, I don't know, bloomy. I don't know. Like I said, I wasn't really thrilled with many of the other things in the magazine. And I haven't I haven't read the articles yet either. There's just not a whole lot. I did like this hat. It's let's see if there's a different picture cuz they use a lot of they have like a whole section where they use i-cord. And I hate i-cord. I just I don't know. I find it boring. So I don't particularly like to use it, but I really like this hat. Now, the problem with this hat for me is I have a big head and thick hair, and it's supposed to be a little, like, a slouchy hat, which means it will probably fit me like a beanie. So I, I tend to try not to pick slouchy hats for myself. And then this sweater I kind of liked... But I don't know if you, anyone else will notice the problem with this sweater. It's here, and then also here. That one you can see the problem more. It gaps. I'm like, especially if you're not wearing a shirt under it, but I just don't think that's flattering when you're looking like you're going to bust out of your sweater. So I think they needed to knit it a little bigger or put it on a smaller model. Because I just think when you show a cardigan and your buttons are gapping, it's just not very flattering. 
But like I said, I bought it because I really want to make the cover sweater in Noro. Oh my goodness. I fell in love with it. Hardcore. Then, while I was looking for that magazine, I did a search, and guess what came up? You're never going to believe it. The new Noro magazine. Because I love Noro. So, it is the spring-summer issue, which is kind of funny because they say spring-summer. Because last year they had, like, a spring-summer one, and they never had, like, a fall-winter. So, this is only the second, and they're about a year apart. And I did read the articles in this, and I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a whole article um, called Cult of Noro, and it just, it talks about, you know, the people who out, out there who are just Noro fanatics. And I wouldn't say I'm a fanatic. I don't buy, like, stock in it. I don't have it in a bazillion colors. But I do like it, and I like using it, and I don't find it to be too itchy so I think it definitely softens once you soak it in the wash so first off I want to talk about this dress because I really like this dress with one exception it has like the cinch cord at the waist I just think this floppy dangly it was it's probably an eye cord um just isn't very flattering I think if they would have just made the dress more fitted and not had the cord, I would have been a huge fan of this dress. Because otherwise, I think it's it's a cute dress. I'd wear it if I could pull it off. But this one, not so much. So knitted dresses must really be a thing right now. But let's see, so you have the Noro across the top, and you have the Noro skirt. In the middle, it's like a lace, and you can actually, in this picture, you can see your belly button. And I'm like, okay, the thought that goes through my head is you totally will have to wear a strapless bra because you have to have the same problem up here. It's just not for me, I guess. I don't like it. And there's a lot of that. There's this that's a lace dress. This again with lace. I mean, like I said, I guess knitted dresses are a trend. There's also some shawl patterns, which are pretty. But the reason, because I got on Ravelry to look at the patterns in the magazine before I bought it. I'm trying to learn. But the reason I bought the dress is because I totally want to make this. Maybe like when I lose the 20 pounds I'm trying to lose. This. I love it. I love it. Love it. So you knit, like, you know, wedges back and forth, and I just think it's super cute. That was my main motivation for buying this magazine. Um, I want to like this. It's a hoodie. But there's just something about it that's holding me back. I don't know. I think I would want to put a button up here instead of us using a shaw stick. And then for some reason, Noro designers like to make these big, huge, chunky sweaters. I don't ever like those because it's knit sideways and then the sleeves are knit up and, you know, across. I don't know. It's just weird to me. Although, this keeps catching my eye, but I would have to make it longer. It's not quite long enough. I don't know why, but it keeps calling me. There's another one that I like. Oh, this. I love this sweater as well. Now, they use something other than Noro for the sleeves because there is a solid section. But it's like a little kimono wrap sweater. So it's kind of lacy. You know, you definitely got to wear something under it. But I just thought it was really pretty. So, um, there's other nice patterns. There are some crocheted ones in here. I'm not going to really touch on them. I don't really like them, so I don't have much positive things to say. But everything in here is obviously made with Noro, so um, if you're a fan of Noro and the Noro designs that you normally see in the Noro books and stuff, 
then you'll like this. Um, you know, that's the great thing about Ravelry is you can now go and look at a complete pattern listing for magazines before you buy them. But um, I was very pleased with it overall. Uh, I mean, like I said, I'm not a huge lover of some of the designs because they're just not my style. But that one, like, tank or sleeveless, it's not really tank, it's sleeveless top is like in my queue in the top 20 of that I want to make really soon so it must be it must have been a Noro kind of day because between this magazine and the one sweater I fell in love with and the knit scene oh my goodness love it Whew, okay spinning I spun this week I did not knit a whole lot but I did get quite a bit of spinning done and I took my bobbin off to show you this is um, my Loop Bullseye Bump in the Strawberry Patch colorway. And it started off with a Kelly Green. And then it went to hot pink, like really bright hot pink. And then it went to navy blue. And now I'm in this like light celery green. So, and then here's the bump itself. So I still have... Like I said, the light green, and then it goes to like an olive, and this beautiful, it's funny because it's called strawberry patch, but it's kind of like a raspberry pink. So, I'm getting there. My goal is to have this done before I leave. Like, spun, plied, washed, the whole bit. And I did not get any new fiber. None. But I'm hoping, hoping to score some fiber at the retreat so I will have something, something new to spin. Yay. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see all the vendors that will be there. I'm getting excited. Eight days. So that's it for the knitting. So if you're tuning off now. I'll see you next week, but if you're sticking around for the slice of life, we'll just get into it. Whew. So, um, I can't say I necessarily had a rough week, but I'm like, I had this week where I was just hungry all the time, and I don't normally get like that. I just was hungry, and I'm like, I try to eat lots of lean proteins and fiber and protein, you know, just every chance I get. And it was so hard. We went to my mother-in-law's for dinner, and she made a spaghetti. And she always puts hamburger in her, her sauce, which we don't. I mean, when I, when I think of spaghetti, I think of it as a vegetarian meal. Um, so I always try to, like, shake off the meat. Or, like, you know, usually the meat kind of sinks to the bottom. So I always try to get the spaghetti without the meat because it just racks up the points. But when I buy pasta, I've been buying the Barilla Plus. So it has like added fiber and protein in it. And it seems to keep me fuller. I ate and I had two cups of pasta. And then she makes her own homemade sauce. So it's just tomatoes and seasoning. So it's like no points. And I mean, I was full. And I had a salad and I was full. But it just seemed like shortly thereafter, I was hungry again. Like, it wasn't filling enough. There was no protein in the meal. Like, I would have loved some baked chicken with it or something. So I just, oh, it was so hard. Um, I did lose 0 0.9 this week, so just a hair shy of a pound. So I was really pleased with that because I was not expecting a good week. I also have been so busy trying to pack up uh, all my supplies for the retreat that I just been so stressed and I have not exercised this past week like I normally do um, but I did get my box of supplies sent to Minnesota it's on its way it should be there in a day or two so that's a huge relief and I'm trying to get my bag packed my suitcase but the problem is is I don't have a lot of clothes that fit and so I kind of have to wait to do laundry like right before the trip so I'll, everything that I want to have washed and clean for the trip will be ready so, because I've been getting rid of my big stuff, because I don't want to wear big stuff. I don't want to walk around in clothes that are two, three sizes too big for a few days in the meantime. Because then I don't feel good about myself. I feel frumpy, and it just brings me down. Why would I do that to myself? 
<clears throat> so I've been trying to, like I said, just get that packed up and I just, I'm feeling so frazzled. Like this week too, so far, I have just, I don't, I can't say struggling is the right word, but I had to go and uh, I had to go shopping for clothes over the weekend because I'm coming to the realization that, okay, you can only wear clothes that are so big for so long. And then after a while, they just flat out don't fit. And you're uncomfortable. So I want, I really wanted like some capris or something to take with me. And uh, so I went to Kohl's because they were having a sale. And then I had like a 15% off coupon and I had $10 Kohl's cash. <clears throat> so I went and I'm like, okay, I normally shop <clears throat> in like the plus section and if you've never had to shop in the plus section, there's a big difference between an extra large in the regular size section and a 1X in the plus section. It's not the same. Um, the extra large in the regular section has more shape to it, um, a little more tailored, um, not as wide, I guess you might say. And sometimes not as long either. So I I always know that section. And I, you know, normally would have only wore like a 1X and, um, you know, bigger jeans. And I'm like, okay, I'm not in those sizes anymore. So I had to go. And I guess before I put on my weight, I had never really shopped at Kohl's before. I'm a huge Old Navy fan. And... But Old Navy only goes up to so such sizes, and then I think you can only buy them online. At least our Old Navy out here does not carry any plus sizes, or bigger sizes bigger than a 16, maybe. So, um, I'm like, shoot, I really didn't know my way around Kohl's, and it was quite an experience. It was very emotional for me. I guess that's why I'm talking about it. I'm not trying to brag, like, oh yeah, I so small now, because I still got a ways to go. Don't let me fool you. But it was such an emotional experience. Like, and I felt like a fish out of water. Like, I felt so awkward, because I'm like, wait, there's clothes over here. If you cross the aisle, there's clothes over there, too. Now, I see that there's a junior section, but this is still women's over here, and it, yet yeah, it's kind of two sections, and it was just kind of confusing for me. So, um, I did. I found capris, and... That didn't take real long. Where the problem lied is when I decided I really, really needed some new bras. Let's face it, you can't wear a bra that's too big for very long. It's uncomfortable, and it's honestly not healthy for you. Now, I used to sell bras. I used to be in sales, and I sold bras. <laughs> so I know how to fit for a bra. I know that I was in the wrong size, as 80% of all women are. So I was determined, I am going to get a good fitting bra. I'm going on vacation, and I want to feel good, and I want to be comfortable. That is such a huge thing. When your bra doesn't fit, I'm telling you, it can affect your whole mood. And you're not comfortable. So it took two hours. I tried on every single bra in my size, plus like a size bigger and smaller and variables. Like I'd find the bra in my size and then get one a couple sizes. It took two hours if not a little over two hours. And it was like the next to the last one I tried on that I was like, oh my God, it fits. And then I tried on the last one and I'm like, mm. So I tried on the other one again. It's really important. Try the bra on twice. Seriously. I used to sell these bras, take my word, or not these bras, I didn't work at Kohl's. But I used to sell bras, take my word on it, try it on twice. Double check. So it was just like this huge ordeal. Like when I left the store, I was emotionally exhausted. Like, I, I just wanted to go home. Like, I was so done. <laughs> so, I'm just like, hopefully I won't have to, to shop like that again for a little while. Hopefully the things I have will fit. I'm like, you know, you don't think about that. I think when you think of losing weight, you're thinking about how exciting it's going to be. Just to be smaller. But it's like all these new experiences to me and, and trying to find things that fit. And yet you know you're not where you're at yet. 
So you don't want to go crazy overboard and buy a ton of stuff. So it's just, it's just, it can be frazzling at times. And I'm, you know, I'm so thankful I am where I'm at, but, oh, I'm telling you, just wiped me out. I was just so spent. So, other than that, nothing new going on. Like I said, I'm trying to stay motivated to exercise, which has been really hard, especially since we've had a ton of rain. And I like to get outside. So, I did run over the weekend, um, which is the first time I had run in a while since I had gotten the shin splints. So, I did pretty good. I was really exhausted. I went for an hour and did like a run, walk, combo kind of thing. Was wiped out. Seriously tired. <laughs> so, but it felt good. I'm Like I said, I'm trying to stay motivated. I think once I get into the swing of things with the kids being home, because that's what's throwing me off. I mean, in all honesty, love my kids. I know they're excited about summer, but we just got to find our rhythm again. So... I got my workout in this morning. Yay! <laughs> oh, so that's it for me. Like I said, I've, I'm planning on recording next week, but if it for some reason doesn't work out, I will either see you next week or the week after when I can tell you all about how my trip went. And um, hopefully we'll have some things knitted on. <laughs> so until then, I am Jenna, also known as Retro Lemon, on... Ravelry, Plurk, Twitter, Pinterest, um, Weight Watchers, Fitbit, everywhere. And I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye.